vomiting and nausea. Although the symptoms are limited to the digestive system, nausea and vomiting can also be the result of a malfunction in other organs, as follows. Nausea is a bodily manifestation of the urge to vomit that originates in the larynx or upper abdomen. Vomiting is a physical event characterized by the quick and forceful expulsion of the stomach contents. Retching occurs when the abdominal muscles flex repeatedly, causing the stomach to empty. Esophageal regurgitation, this is when food from the stomach rises to the top of the esophagus and is expelled via the mouth in a large quantity and frequency. Cases of vomiting. There is a distinction drawn between vomiting in many situations, including life-threatening illnesses such as intestinal obstruction, pleuritis, or a perforation in one of the digestive system's organs. Cases in which the patient needs to be admitted to the hospital for treatment due to acute vomiting that causes dehydration or a salt imbalance in the blood. Diagnosis is required in chronic instances in order to determine the best treatment option. Nausea and vomiting, causes and risk factors. The following are some of the causes of nausea and vomiting. 1. A medication side effects. Nausea and vomiting are common side effects of the following treatments. Chemotherapy for tumors that are malignant. Radiation therapy. Anti-inflammatories. Cardiovascular medications. Water pills. Hormones, for example. Antibiotics. Inflammatory bowel disease medications. Asthma treatment substance abuse 2 inflammatory conditions acute gastroenteritis and middle ear infections are two examples 3 irritable bowel syndrome include the following information irritable bowel syndrome gastrointestinal paralysis a stomach ulcer acute inflammation of the gallbladder and pancreas cysts Inflammation of the liver, celiac illness, intestinal ischemia, mucosal metastasis of the intestine. 4. Central nervous system disorders include the following information migraine headaches, a cerebral bleed, meningitis, epilepsy is a neurological disorder, psychiatric disorders auditory canal disorders and otitis media, nausea from mobility, vomiting while flying or traveling by sea, the emotional response, depressed mood, anxiety, abdominal discomfort, 5. Migraine abdominal. It is a rare syndrome that causes nausea and vomiting on a regular basis. This syndrome is most common in girls under the age of 5, with an average of 8 repeated bouts each year. 7. Eating Problems The following factors may contribute to eating disorders. Anorexia nervosa, anorexia, bulimia, displacement response and depression. 8. Infection by some disorders. Diseases like as diabetic complications thyroid hyperthyroidism addison syndrome adrenal insufficiency primary hypocortisolism kidney failure 9 being pregnant vomiting and nausea become more common throughout the first trimester of pregnancy nausea and vomiting complications in the vast majority of vomiting instances, dehydration is the real concern. Dehydration progresses at a different rate depending on the person's size, the frequency of vomiting episodes, and the presence or absence of diarrhea, therefore youngsters who vomit frequently and have diarrhea are more vulnerable. Dehydration symptoms include An insatiable appetite Urinating rarely or with urine that is dark yellow sunken eyes or a dry mouth 
the skin's natural suppleness is lost. The abdomen skin can be gently pinched with the five fingers of the hand to detect this. The skin is intended to return to its usual posture and position quickly after leaving the skin, but if it does not, this indicates dehydration. Nausea and vomiting are diagnosed. The source of the sickness is indicated by the symptoms that the patient is experiencing. Meningitis can cause headaches and stiff neck with vomiting, and prolonged nausea without vomiting can be caused by some drugs, ulcers, or cancer, and there may be a link between head traumas and vomiting. There is also a requirement for a thorough physical examination, a blood test that determines the extent of fluid loss and aids in proper diagnosis, abdominal and digestive system photographs, the endoscope tests to determine stomach and small intestine motility, such as O respiratory examinations, electrogastrography, EGS, egg, electrogastrography, O duodenal and intestinal manometry, treatment for nausea and vomiting. Mild vomiting can be handled without medical intervention. 1. Treatment at home. The goal of home treatment is to get as much fluid into the body as possible while preventing more stomach problems. Treatment entails. Clear liquids such as water and juices should be consumed. If alternative liquid-based therapies have failed, sucking on ice cubes may be used. Drinking a lot of liquids at once and eating solid foods are both bad ideas. You can try eating soup once your situation improves. As a gradual return to regular feeding, dairy products may aggravate the condition, however, lollipops in general are a fantastic choice for children. 2. Medication. Antiemetics and stimulants are the two primary classes of medications, which include the following. Antiemetic medications. Include the following information. 1. Anticholinergic medicines. Anticholinergic drugs are only utilized in limited situations due to their numerous negative effects and minimal efficacy. It is only used to treat disorders that are caused by movement. 2. Drugs that block histamine receptors are beneficial in the treatment of migraines and movement disorders caused by an action on the inner ear's balance center. It has an antiemetic action throughout. 3. Antiemetic drugs such as phenothiazines. It works on a variety of brain receptors. It is, in general, beneficial in the treatment of migraines. Buterophenones are a type of buterophenone that is used to treat mental disease. There have been a few attempts to utilize it to treat migraines. 5. Anti-serotonin-3 receptor antagonists, these medications are particularly helpful as antiemetic treatments after chemotherapy and for migraine treatment. 6. Dopamine receptor antagonists 2, affect the central nervous system, which is the brain stem and peripheral nervous system's control center for vomiting. These compounds are antiemetic and esophageal and gastric motility stimulators. Cannabinoids are marijuana-like compounds. There are limited and unproven reports on the effects of these drugs. Corticosteroids are only used in emergency situations to treat brain edema. 9. Benzodiazepines. Used to treat anxiety and sleep disturbances. The reticular activating system, which is responsible for nervous alertness, is inhibited by these medications stimulus for movement. The following motion stimulators are most successful in the treatment of gastroesophageal reflux disease and gastroesophageal reflux disease. 1. Serotonin agonists 4. This medication class promotes muscular contractions throughout the digestive tract. The release of the neurotransmitter acetylcholine from nerve terminals is frequently affected by muscle movement. 2. Macrolide antibiotics cause the duodenum to secrete the hormone motilin, which stimulates stomach emptying. 3. Surgical intervention. There are also procedures such as join the stomach and small intestine together, gastrostomy by endoscopy, 
nausea and vomiting prevention. The following are some prevention strategies. Stick to clear or iced beverages. Light snacks such as pretzels or plain toast are recommended. Avoid foods that are fried, oily, or sugary. Take your time eating and consume modest, frequent meals. Never combine hot and cold foods. Sip your drinks slowly. Avoid physical activity after a meal.